after being content with just four or five horses to uh, play around with and also being known as the king of the claimers, my next guest has exploded as far as his numbers are concerned, both as a trainer and as an owner. I caught up with Leon Jurd to find out the reason why. Well, Leon, you seem to have been very proactive, like both with horses from Western Australia and Victoria, and the numbers seem to be increasing week by week. Uh, yeah, well, it kind of just happened. Uh, we used to have a lot of claimers, and then that, the ratings kind of killed the claimers off, so we just switched tack, and and then I started buying a few in Perth, and I've, I remember I'd done an interview with Mick Gurham once, and... Um, uh, I said, oh, I reckon by the time I get to about 25, I'll probably get a decent one. I think I bought 46, and I still haven't got a decent one. So, but they're all right. They pick up money, so that's the main thing. With the WA horses in particular, your own eye, or do you have someone scouting for you? Nah, I always buy my own horses. Uh, if I make a mistake, it's on me. It's as simple as that. You've been turning up the last couple of Tuesdays. I said usually two or three horses would see you tops, but now seven or eight. Well, it just kind of worked out that way. The the, the, the money's so, so good now in New South Wales. We, we really haven't got any horses in Queensland now. They're all in New South Wales. Um, but it's easy for me um, just to come down here, come down at 11.30, 12, and, and I'm home at 6, you know. As I said, two divisions, 15 or 16 as a trainer and also numerous other horses with uh, other trainers. Yeah, we spread them around. Um, basically what happens is, is I buy them, we try them. If they're not good enough for Sydney, we'll just give them to someone else around the country on, you know, generally on, you know, some sort of deal and and they get a horse that's ready to race and, you know, if they do good, well, we always get something every week and they're doing something, so, you know. That's one of the, uh, the important things there, Leon. You're always looking for horses that are up and going. Yeah, yeah, I never... Yeah, and we got to be ready just to go. That's that's pretty much it, you know. I, time's money, really, you know. You got nine runners on Tuesday here at Club Menegal. Let's have a look in the first, the uh, truck Quick Cash. Yeah, he's an honest little horse. He's actually going okay. He actually drops down to that bottom division, so he, he, sh he should run all right, you know. The wide draw of the concern? Mm, not really. He gets back anyway, you know. He runs home. It just depends how the races run, you know. Interesting runner in race two, new to the stable, Flash Kai Valley, very talented performer from Victoria, previously with uh, trainers such as uh, Brent Lilly and also Shane Sanderson. Yeah, we, we bought him. I bought him off. I went to buy him off Brent Lilly and Sando got him before me and then I ended up buying him off Sando. But um, he's just an honest horse. If, if he can just keep picking away at checks and that, he'll do us, you know. In this particular field, Leon, the draw is all important. He's drawn nicely. Yeah, he has, and he's kind of got in the second division of the trot. You know, so I, I don't know what he's like. I've never had him in the cart, but um, we'll find out on Tuesday. You know. In race five, number four, many mine yet, and also Radiant Amber. Yeah, they're two of the probably the most disappointing horses I've had. Um, Mini Mine, she won like three or four metros at Gloucester Park, and the other mare was the same. And yeah, they're taking a while to come around, but. I think they're just horses, you know, but they're actually, Mini Mine actually went quite well the other day, so we'll see. Over to race six, you've got three runners in this particular event, get ready to rock, tis a new day, kiss by a rose. Some of their form's not too bad. Yeah, tis a new day, he's got a bit of iron and out to do. Um, get ready to rock is down, getting down now to where she'll be competitive. And kiss by a rose, that was the first run the other day for two months, and I thought she went quite well. So I don't think she's real brave, but, you know, if she can run home, she'll be okay. You're talking about money spinners, Lee. You like them earning their, their way. In race seven, you have two horses that fit that category. Kate was dreaming gate two and the old fella, 10 years of age, high view saddle, but no one's told him about his age. No, nah, he's pretty amazing, actually. He hadn't won a race for two and a half years before I got him. Um, and, and in saying that, we, we've only won, I think, four, four races with him, but... He's got close to, I think he's heading towards 70,000 in since we've had him in a bit over a year. So, yeah, he does know how old he is. He's coming off a very good effort, Leon, third behind Clara Shogun here last week, who does seem to have a lot of talent. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's honest. I, I, I honestly think he just likes to stay in that class, you know. He, he's happy to run a place and that's <laughs> it, you know. And the other mayor, Catalyst Dream, she's racing really well. When I first got her from Perth, she was, I think she had five runs here and done nothing. 
Um, then she went to Penrith and she won, then I'd give her a spell. And she'd come back and she's hardly missed a check, you know, so, so she's got a little bit better, you know. And would you suggest we play your runners, particularly some of those better class ones? Uh, if they, just for the place, you know. If, if, if I could get four or five places for the day, I'd be happy as anything, you know. Well, we've got to catch up with you once again. Good luck on Tuesday and uh, good luck sorting out all these horses. Yeah, thanks, Mick. See you.